All right, welcome everybody. And here we have our first titled match in the Real Chess League. Two title chess players. It's Fide Master Marco Rela with the white pieces playing against I am Adrian Geschnitzer with the black pieces, both 21 years old. First of all, let's take a look. Fide Master Marco Rela. He is a very tricky customer indeed. Hello. I'm Marco and I'm one part of the Chesserbits99 streaming account on Twitch. Beside playing and of course streaming chess, I love to play football because I think it's important for chess players to stay fit in a physical way too. My opponent for today, the strong international master Adrian, is my streaming partner. He knows my biggest weapon, the opening trap, so I will try to get some playable tactical position. With these, I want to create crushing attacks with tricky moves that I'm famous for to prove that I earned my right to play in the real chess league. Uh, has scored a number of very impressive wins online. Uh, likes to think of himself as an opening expert, especially when it comes to traps, but is clearly uh, a very talented player in general, as we can see him duffing up some of uh, Germany's best. He's a very, very uh, interesting player. We are now seeing uh, uh, Marcos take his place uh, suited and booted for the occasion, looking smart, looking sharp, looking ready to do business today against a very, very tough opponent, of course. Adrian, as I mentioned, uh, is uh, the same age and Adrian is, uh, well, he likes to think of himself as Hello, my name is Adrian Knitzer and I'm an international master from Germany. I'm 21 years old and I'm doing an education to become a nursery teacher. In my free time I like to play soccer, table tennis and of course chess. I'm looking forward to my debut in the Real Chess League against Marco Riele and he should watch out. A big fan of Grishchuk and they enjoy streaming together actually, they're very good friends. Uh, they go on Twitch and stream together as Chess Hobbits 99. So they know each other's games, they're the same age, they're very, very close in strength. So there's a lot of pride on the line, a lot of bragging rights. The stare down there was actually quite intense. You can be friends away from the chessboard, but when, once you get on it, it's all about winning. It doesn't matter who you're playing. Friendship does not play a part at all. And as the match goes on, of course, I'll talk a little bit more about both of these players. Uh, they've both got some very, very interesting stories. It is, of course, Marco playing with the white pieces. 10 minutes plus 2 seconds with the uh, increment of 2 seconds, of course. So bonus time of 2 seconds every time you make a move. And we get uh, an opening which is, at the moment, yet to be completely clarified, but an interesting one. We get, um, well, it could have been interesting. Marco has decided to go for a very quiet line playing this move pawn to e3. Could have advanced that d-pawn up to d5, but uh, he decides to go for a quiet variation, perhaps just trying to play the longer game against Adrian. Uh, and yeah, we have G6. So Adrian saying, okay, I still want to play a kind of hyper modern way, Fianchettoing that bishop. And it's going to be on Marco to decide how he wants to set out. Is he going to play bishop E2? Is he going to play pawn to C4? He now has to basically make a decision as to what he wants to do uh, uh, to continue in this position. And Marco, well, apart from being a FIDE master, of course, uh, we saw in some of those snips before, he's a very keen football player. Hasn't yet made an international master norm, uh, but is certainly, when it comes to blitz, uh, a big expert and uh, should be causing Adrian some problems today. 
Looked as though he was going to move the bishop there, playing a very slow system, very soft system. And he decides to put the bishop on d3. This is already quite an unusual uh, way to play. Uh, there's an exchange of pawns in the center. I'm not sure that is completely necessary, but it's quite unusual to put the bishop there simply because you could claim that the bishop is really hitting a brick wall against this fianchetto structure on the king side. So that bishop looking at that g6 pawn, but it's very, very well defended. It's not clear that the, the bishop is super well suited there, but now he plays a very interesting move, jumps in with the knight straight away. I think this is a pretty harmless system. Black has got a number of moves here. Bishop to g7, continuing his development or bringing the knight out to c6 are the two big candidates. I fully expect just the standard bishop to g7 move, where black really has got absolutely no problems whatsoever. He's not done anything wrong, and indeed, Adrian does decide to go for bishop to g7. Okay, white castles. I'm pretty sure black will follow suit. Don't see any reason why he wouldn't. So castles, castles on the board, and now Marco has to decide what he wants to do to continue here. Adrian, as mentioned, is an international master, has got a number of Grandmaster scalps under his belt, has beaten Grandmaster Sedlak, for example, who's 2600, uh, taken scalps against, for example, legendary Grandmaster Yepishin, and uh, has uh, some really good, interesting tournament scores as well. Came second in the Innsbruck Chess Festival, where he got his last international master norm. And uh, of course, is going to be gunning for that grand master title. Actually, only got the international master title in 2020. Um, and now we see a very interesting move uh, by Adrian, which is the move bishop f5. This is a very double-edged move, of course, because now white can actually take that bishop, which fractures that black kingside pawn structure. But Adrian is claiming that he can always support everything by playing the move pawn to e6 uh, thereafter. So I think we will get a capture and pawn takes on f5. I'm not a huge fan of this by Adrian, actually. I think this is uh, a bit unnecessary from him because the bishop on d3 wasn't really doing that much. And I'm a bit worried now that white uh, can just start thinking about being really aggressive by bringing this rook up to e3 and then swinging it over to g3 or h3. The so-called uh, rook lift, very dangerous maneuver. And uh, now a sip of water by Marco. I think he's going to be feeling relatively comfortable. He certainly looks comfortable. Adrian looks a bit more troubled, and I, I think rightly so. I think Adrian has unnecessarily complicated this game and now probably has to find a precise way to proceed. And Marco, being a blitz specialist, uh, you know, he's going to be feeling uh, very, very uh, excited about playing this position. Okay, we get another move here. Knight to e4 by Adrian. Um, again, not overly convinced with this move. I think White now has got a number of very interesting moves. For example, bringing the queen out to h5 immediately comes to mind, attacking the f5 pawn. Uh, you could even play in a positional way, just kicking this knight in the center with pawn to f3, where after knight takes knight on c3, pawn takes knight, uh, your position is still very, very fine. But queen to h5 to me feels completely natural. Or, of course, you could just go for the throat immediately with the move rook to e3, as played by Marco. A very direct attempt to say, well, you've removed one of your key kingside defenders. This knight on f6 was defending the h7 pawn. I'm just going to go for gold here. I'm going to go 
uh, rook h3, queen h5, and just try and checkmate you. So the big question here, of course, is can Adrian actually take this knight off on e5? And if pawn takes e5, then try the move pawn to d4, attacking the rook on e3 and the knight on c3. Because there is no rook g3 check. Or is Marco just planning on sacrificing that knight in that variation? For example, he'll swing the rook over to h3, and if pawn takes on c3, you have the move queen h5. Could very well work, because there's no way to defend the h7 pawn. So Adrian now in the tank, um, and a tough position um, can go wrong very, very quickly here. If you are, if you're black, if he manages to defend, though, he's going to have, you know, what you could be a pretty good position. Uh, prospects on the queen side and everything else. So the next few moves are absolutely crucial. Marco, though, now with a, an extra minute on the clock, has to be feeling quite happy uh, about his position. Um, stretching, obviously, time up, and in general, in these shorter time control um, formats, you really want to have the initiative. Uh, the initiative, of course, in chess being when you are making the moves and your opponent is replying to your moves, so you're effectively setting the tempo for the game. And being on the front foot, is very useful because your opponent will have to make tough decisions with less time. And as we can see already, Adrian slowly going under the five minute mark, and that means that there's gonna be a two minute advantage already for Marco. Adrian decides to play e6, which uh, of course is a very natural move. It consolidates the structure. But what I want to know is what is his idea after the move rook to h3, which is Really, that or taking on e4 first, the move you have to play here is wide. Um, and he does just go for it immediately, which feels like the natural move to me. Feels absolutely standard to play like this. So, Adrian must have been expecting this. And the question is... What was his idea here? What was his reply? I personally don't see it easily. Was it to go knight to g5? Uh, which looks a bit strange, but could be possible. But then maybe you can just slide the rook over to g3 and there's all the pieces lined up on the g file. I don't love that. So I'm very curious what Adrian has got planned here. And, you know, based on what we're seeing, there's really... Uh, uh, every reason to believe why Marco has had so much success online. He's actually finished in the second position in the Title Tuesday tournament, which is the big tournament on chess.com, where some of the world's best play on a weekly basis. Nepomneshi, Nakamura, Maxim Vashilagrav, amongst other super, super grandmasters. And the fact that he's finished second in that tournament I think speaks a lot. Not only that, he's actually got personal online successes against some incredibly strong grandmasters. Eric Hansen, Linnea Dominguez, who's a top 15 player in the world, Alexienko, who just played in the candidates. And Adrian really suffering. Now a full three minutes down on the clock uh, and trying to calculate, but you know, you can understand why he's not feeling that comfortable here. Uh, the position is not easy to play and it's not even clear to me what you should do here as black. I think bishop f5 firstly by him and then knight e4. All of these moves were just not necessary basically and now you've just got this weak pawn on h7 and under three minutes to decide how you're going to try and meet queen h5 because to my eyes it's just not that simple at all. He decides to take on e5. Now we reach an interesting moment where taking back on e5 is not 
automatic, like some captures. There are actually three moves here for white. You can take on e5, you can take on e4 as well, knight takes e4, or you can even think about queen h5 immediately. Queen h5 immediately does not blunder a piece because after knight to f6, you can then play queen to g5 check, forcing king to h8 and then take back on e5. So there are actually three legitimate moves here. Now, the most natural move is of course just to take back on e5 and that does look particularly strong because I don't see again how black is going to meet the simple queen h5 after this. Um, knight takes e4 is also interesting because uh, you attack the bishop still and then the, uh, another knight getting to the king side for black is very far away. So knight takes e4 looks good, pawn takes e5 looks good. In fact, it all looks good. Uh, I don't really see... Uh, and he does go queen to h5 immediately. Brilliant stuff. I mean, fair play for making a show out of it. So he's going for the jugular here with queen takes h7. And the point, yeah, is that after knight f6, uh, does he want to go queen h queen g5 check or does he have even some more brilliant ideas? Maybe he has some even more brilliant ideas like playing the move. Could it be possible that after knight f6 he wants to play queen h4? Probably not. It's probably a bit too much. He's probably going to give the check, king h8, d takes e5, forcing the knight away, and then after, let's say, knight to g4, just go back queen to h5. And it looks as though the pawn on h7 is, is indefensible. And Adrian's position is, is quite simply falling apart here, and he's shaking his head, and rightly so, because I don't actually see a defense here. And White's play was just so straightforward as well. I mean, it really was... Uh, an incredibly, uh, you know, telegraphed plan as well. I mean, it wasn't one of these ideas that came out of nowhere or, you know, uh, something that you couldn't guess. Okay, so he's given up the bishop, bishop h2, rook h2, and now knight f6. Now white's got lots of options. Just queen to h4 looks extremely strong to my eyes, threatening bishop to g5. Um, he goes queen to h6. That's also a similar idea. Now you can't move the knight because of mate in one. Rook e8 is going to run into bishop g5, followed then by knight bd7. And you hold on just for the moment, but you can never really escape the construction. You're in a an eternal pin, and then it's just a case of how do you want to, uh, to get over. So bishop g5, knight bd7 is on the board. Okay. So we have, he actually, there is a resource here, which is to go rook g8, rook to g6. So it looks as though Adrian has actually found something, which uh, is, uh, is quite well done, actually. I don't see an automatic victory now for, for Marco. So maybe he just didn't even have to go for this queen h5 stuff. It looked very, very tempting, but maybe just taking back on e5 and depriving that knight the square of returning to f6 was the way forward. Now, lots of things are possible. Um, I think a very interesting move here actually is to play the move knight to e2. The knight on c3 is not participating. And the idea is that if black then plays rook to g8 to threaten rook to g6, kind of bolstering everything, to then play the move knight f4. And it looks as though Marco's going to go for it. Exactly. This is great stuff. Rook g8 and knight f4. Brilliant. Very nicely done. Now, rook g6 isn't possible. You still cannot move the knight on f6 because of mate in one. And white maintains control here still. And now you can't even, you can't move the queen to f8 because you drop the knight on, on f6. So now black looks like he's completely stuck and and white has still got one more rook to get into the game and he can try and do that for example by playing rook to e1 rook to e3 and then rook round to h3 would be a typical idea so yeah black can play okay rook to g7 ah rook to g7 actually might threaten it doesn't quite threaten knight to g8 but it's it's close um it's very very close all right, 37 seconds only for Adrian. So 
He's gonna have to find an amazing resource. Is queen to g8? No, queen to g8 isn't a threat because you drop f6. So it looks as though there isn't quite a threat yet. Uh, so the question is, does Marco actually have some kind of knockout idea here? I think an interesting idea is actually just to drop this queen back to h4, just to prevent any knight g8 ideas. Rook to e1, of course, bringing the rook in is also completely fine because on knight g8, you've always got queen's hg7 check. Winning an exchange, and that should still be enough for a victory, although there's a bit of a technical um, issue there. You have to convert, but it should be convertible. So is he just going to go rook to e1? Or is he going to find something else? I don't see a clear other route. So rook to e1 or rook to d1 would be my guess. Queen to h4 I think is interesting. And I don't really see another sensible move. If I had to guess I would say rook to e1. But again, Marco will decide. And he's approaching the 2 minutes 30 mark. So enough time and this is one of those moments where investing time in your position into thinking is crucial this next move is actually a critical moment so he absolutely wants to make sure that he plays the very best move here and he is going for the move queen h4 which was one of the moves i mentioned i think this is a completely fine move you avoid all the knight tactics with knight to g8. And now, Adrian, only 25 seconds left on the clock. How do you ever defend such a position with such little time? It looks almost impossible to my eyes. I expect he'll just end up playing the move queen e7 to try and bring the other rook in. But no, it looks like he's picking up the rook. I think rook c8. Okay, rook c8, c3. And now he does decide to give up the exchange and play the move queen g8. So he didn't see another way to proceed. The attack now, yeah, the, the attack now is has dwindled and f3 is excellent. And now we've got a technical uh, position where white is a full exchange up. And in my opinion, this should just be quite easily winning. King f2, b4, rook c1, protecting the pawn didn't think you needed to allow that actually to be honest knight b6 okay now this rook on h2 really isn't doing very much i would be bringing that back to h1 sharpish i would want that rook back in play and he does that excellent rook to h1 that's a good move now you are actually threatening to take this pawn on b4 so he takes and rook takes c3 Rook BA trying to keep the pawns on. Now B3 is a slam dunk move. Well done, Marco. Excellent. Restricting this knight. The knight goes back to C8, but now you can just double on the C file and get that rook to the seventh rank. Or you could go rook to C7 immediately uh, just to stop this knight moving. But this position is, is absolutely dire for black because these pawns on B3 and F3 are doing such a good job. Decides to come to the sixth instead. Rook c6, knight b5, no bother. You can protect that d4 pawn in many ways. You can even exchange the rooks off first, which is what he does. Takes, takes, king g7. Now king e3 is excellent. Just protecting that pawn. And black's knights just aren't working. Decides to play the move uh, knight to d7. But this should not be enough. a4 is excellent, kicking the knight. Now you can't even go knight to d6. He goes knight to b6 just about holding on for the moment, but any move here is going to be good. Rook to b8, rook to b7 looks extremely natural to my eyes. He goes rook to c6, also good. Now knight to a3, now this knight is actually stuck on the rim, so that knight isn't escaping anytime soon. Decides to push a5, knight to d7. Now anything rings, rook c7, even knight takes e6 check straight away is very, very good, and he does that. F, yeah, and the point is f takes e6, rook c7 is going to be good. And black is in, uh, yeah, a completely lost position. f4 check doesn't do anything, you can just take it. 
decides to go king d3, knight b5 holding on just for the moment. You can take the pawn on h7, rook b7, a6. Okay, now just take... Or you can take the knight like this. This is a very nice finish. Very, very well done by Marco. And the pawn queens and uh, Adrian should be resigning here. Uh, I don't know quite why he's playing on. If he's playing on till checkmate, uh, an extra queen is going to be sufficient for victory here. Probably just playing on until mate, which is nice. And checkmate is on the board. Very, very well done by Marco. Uh, pretty flawless game, actually. Everything he did, he did in flow. Everything he did... Uh, was uh, made a ton of sense and uh, as we can see now they're analyzing the game okay okay let's look at the match yes um, at f6 c5 d3 g6 bishop d3 and uh, yeah i was hoping for the line of uh, nakamura if you know this bishop g7 b3 Castling is not working because of d takes c5, and if queen a5, there's bishop uh, c3. Ah, yes, I know, and then e7 is hanging. Then e7 is hanging, but yes. that's some, okay. some crazy line that I've but seen once. I, I thought I was happy here because I can um, it, uh, transpose to the Karakan and uh, to the exchange variation. And I mean, I played the Karakan with black pieces, and okay, I mean, I was happy to, to reach this position. Um, I didn't know we were in the Karakan. Normally, I don't play the Karakan like this, but mm -hmm. in the okay, game, I yeah. feel well. Knight uh, e5. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's strong to play it. Uh, um, in the, yeah, so early. And here, okay. Did you castle first? I castle first. And then play bishop f5. Uh, yes. And this is still some. I I, some I like it in this games, but uh, okay. Most of the t of the games, I had the dangerous attack on the mm -hmm. G file, but uh, in this game, it <laughs> didn't work. <laughs> no. Okay. Yeah, I, I thought if, if your G pawn is on on the F, F file, file, then I yeah, can my get king some is weak, weak two. Yeah, and after knight c three, knight c three, knight e four. Then I thought, mm -hmm. okay, now if queen h five, yes, I need the rook here, so rook e three. Okay, I was very surprised about rook e three. Um, I yep. don't know this this kind of idea, but okay, it seems logical, of course. And, and, and simple, just rook eight. Yes. And okay, I, w I thought about taking on e5, and if you take back, then I thought rook d3, yeah, after, d4. Uh, after d4, rook d3, and I can't take on c3 because, okay, obviously the d pawn is pinned, and I have to play something like knight c6 to protect the d4 pawn, but then you can exchange on e4, and if I take back, then you have queen g4 check and you are winning the e5, uh, e4 pawn yeah, and, and the position still is hopeless. Um, maybe I also thought uh, takes, takes, d4, rook h3, um, I can give up the, the knight here and then play queen h5, but ah. okay. Yes, because I, I can't go to, uh, to e7. Yeah. Because in, in the game, sometimes when you play e6, you, your, your king could, could run out, but let's look mm. at that now. Okay, yeah. yes. okay, I thought e6 is the principal move. Okay, my, my moves are very yes. clear. Rook H3. And here, okay, I obviously missed Queen H5. Um, I have took... seen it too, too late after I took, but uh, the move was made. And um, maybe you've got some Knight D7, Knight F6. Yeah, but if you exchange both Knights, yeah. then Queen H5, how to protect H7. Yeah, you can go back with the other Knight. But no, no, you, you exchange both. Oh, both, both of them. Okay, yeah, yeah, maybe first the yeah, four, right. uh, e4 knight and then the d7 and then... Mm. Okay, maybe, but... Maybe it's already critical here. Yeah, maybe I have to go back, but after bishop g5. Also, this is not pretty. You took. And then queen h5, strong move. Um, okay, I think if I go back and you take... Uh, uh, first, give the check. Knight f6. Ah, yes, five. of course. Uh, yeah. And then king h8, you take and then go back to the h file yeah. then I can't protect H7. You, you don't have any any pieces. Yeah, I checkmate it instantly. Okay, I have to go for bishop takes h2. Okay, I took with the rook not to 
if I take with the yeah. king, uh, you can give the check and, and maybe, maybe you have six. some uh, knight f6 g4 check problems. Yes, also the, So I thought, okay, the rook. Mm -hmm. Maybe I could go to g3, but mm -hmm. it's it's safe. Yeah, it's okay. safe. okay, I have to go back to, to protect to, the h6. Yeah. Queen, uh, queen g5 check. Queen to queen to h6. H6 f knight. Queen to h6. Yes. Okay, I have to. Yes, I have to play king h8 because bishop g5 and no, maybe the no, maybe I don't have to. Yeah, okay. I mean, it's a logical yeah. move somehow to to prevent this. Bishop g5. Yes. Knight to g7. Okay, I I thought you will make knight e2. Yeah, if if you um, if you get some time to play rook g8, rook g6, then mm -hmm. maybe you you you're fine. But so mm -hmm. I thought, okay, the knight on f4. That's maybe okay. Th these two pieces are the only one who <coughs> aren't taking part of the match. So yes. yeah, knight e two is logical. Rook g eight. Mm -hmm. Knight f four. Rook g seven. And, and here, okay. I mean, maybe you can play something like knight h five. But I thought uh, I can play then knight d six. Uh, rook g six. You take on f six. Okay. I can't take on h seven because the, the knight is on h five. Um, also, I thought about this and I think this could be a funny repetition of moves. If I go rook g6, you take on h7. Knight takes. Ah, knight takes. Oh, I, 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 I only... Can... Yeah, okay, <laughs> I have only seen king takes and then... Okay, okay bishop. Yeah, yeah you, I then, can I get back the, uh, the queen, but you, you're your other bishop. Yeah, 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 of course. No, I, I thought I have to take with the king and then knight takes f6, f6 rook h7. Okay, but... Okay, anyway. but I thought after knight h5, Rook g6, you, you can take with the knight on f6, and then I see the front line to take on h6, rook takes, and then I can take two times on f6, oh. and then play queen, king g7, and your and rook, my, my rook is trapped. trapped. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Okay. Okay, st still, I think my position is better, but I'm very happy with my move. Yeah. Queen h4, h4. I, I think it's. But there were some crazy lines, you're right. And here, somehow, to. Uh, yeah, I. You yeah, can't do anything, so yeah. so much under pressure that I think I have to. Nothing can move change. here. Yes. Okay, I I thought okay maybe it's uh, logical to it's good to play rook c8 first yeah. to okay. provoke c3, c3, but yes. okay here I thought I have to give up the exchange. Yeah, but I think after that it's it's it's, it's it was a very easy game for me because yes. you only had ten seconds or something yes, like and that. and you're playing for two uh, two results. Only. Yes, just to win or to draw. I, I cannot lose this match. Yeah, but I, I thought think may, uh, later f3 um, was was very good to, yes. not, uh, to not allow knight e4, knight e4. Yes. yes, and then your your knights were, were dead. And okay. Okay. okay, maybe I can build some. I can make some pressure on the the queens. Uh, yeah, but if there is the files are open, that's better for my rooks. Yes. For, for, for okay. Your, <laughs> yeah, you, you have to do something. My knights don't. Yeah. I think there the position was already lost. Yeah. Okay, looking forward for the next Yes, match. of course.